Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is what happens, um, how do I figure out the trigonometric uh, ratios and functions uh, based off of a equation here in standard form. So I have a linear equation here in standard form and I want to figure out the trigonometric ratios. Uh, and the parameter here that we have on it is that the x values are going to have to be less than zero. So whatever my input values are for x or in my ratio is going to have to be a, a negative number. So here we go. The first things first, we also talk about the, uh, the graphing the angle and standard position. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and set this up so that I can graph it. And to do that, I have to solve it for y equals mx plus b form. So to go ahead and do that, I subtract 3x from both sides, and I'm left with negative 5y equals negative 3x. Okay, negative 3x from 0, negative 3x. Divide by negative 5, and I'm left with y equals 3 fifths x. Okay? So now from here I can start to graph it. The y-intercept is zero. So I come over here and I draw my graph. Okay, so the y-intercept is zero. All right, so there's my other point. And then to find my other point. Now, we want x values to be less than zero. So I can technically go up three and over one, two, three, four, five and plot a point there. Okay, or I can go one, two, three, uh, four, five, one, two, three, or I can go down three and over five to the left. Now. Here's when the parameter matters, because the x value has to be less than zero. So this one up here, you can notice that the x values get larger going this way, so that's no good. So we're going to get rid of that one, and we're going to draw a line from standard position, and we're going to draw the angle going all the way through like such. Okay. Now in class it did a little bit different, I don't think I got the full end explanation of it, and we drew a straight line through it, but what you actually need to do here is that you have to Okay, draw that angle, and I'll talk more about that when class resumes again. But I erase that part, and then I have now essentially up here is that now I've got my angle in standard position. Now that my angle is in standard position, okay, remember how we talked about those quadrantal angles where all students take calculus? You should now know that down here that the trigonometric functions that are going to be positive are going to be the tangent and also the, um, the uh, cotangent. But anyway, Taking a look at this coordinate, okay, so if I begin to take a look at that coordinate right there, it is over 5, so it's negative 5, negative 3. So there's my coordinates that I'm going to use. And the reason I'm going to use these coordinates is so that I can find the radius. So what's the length from here to here? Once I find that, I'll have x, I'll have a y, and I'll have an r, and I can then use that to find all my trigonometric ratios. So finding r, r is the same thing as if I take the square root. Okay, of x squared, which is negative 5 squared plus negative 3 squared. Okay, negative 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9, so I get r is equal to the square root of 34. So now that I have r is the square root of 34, I also have my x and my y, which is negative 5 and negative 3. So I'm going to write this out a little bit neater, and we're going to move a little bit left here so that we can see all of the trigonometric ratios on the screen. So here we go. So looking at all the trigonometric ratios now. So if I get to take a look at this, the trigonometric ratios I have are sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, cotangent theta, secant theta, and then you have the cosecant theta. And the information that I'm going to need to pull from this graph that I have over here is the r. So I've got also that my r is root 34. Okay. And then the next thing I have from that is that my x and y, so I have my x and y coordinate, which is negative 5, negative 3. So what I'm going to do from here now is just going to go ahead and plug things in and simplify them. So sine theta is y over r, so y over r, so negative 3 over root 34. Now remember the important thing about this is that you can't have a irrational number in the denominator, so we need to rationalize it. We need to make it a rational number, so we multiply this top and bottom by root 34, root 34, and what we're left with here is negative 3, root 34, all over 34. So I hope you can see that there, but that's negative 3, root 34, over 34, okay? Cosine. Cosine is the same thing as this. It's just going to be the y value, or the x value. I'm sorry, it's going to be x over r. So I take that, and what you need to notice here is like to help you with some patterns here, is that if y over r is essentially just switching a number here, 
Okay, I'm going to jump right to this and just switch them all in. So this is just going to be negative 5 root 34 over 34. And that's just a quick little shortcut. Okay? Tangents, y over x. So let me give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, tangent is y over x. So it's negative 3 over negative 5, which is a positive 3 fifths. Cotangent, theta, is just the opposite of that, so it's 5 over 3. Okay, so it's its reciprocal. Okay. And then we take up this, we have secant theta. Okay. And this is when we come back to this one up here, this form. So this is the first form, but that was for sine. Okay. Sine is the reciprocal of cosine. So again, thinking about just replacing that negative 3 with a negative 5. Take the reciprocal of it, secant you get root 34. Negative we usually associate with putting on the top all over 5. Okay. So here's my answers in the boxes here. And then last but not least, we have the cosecant of theta, which is equivalent to just replacing the 5 with the 3, which is the reciprocal of this. So you get negative root 34 all over 3. So there's my answers to all my trigonometric functions. I boxed them just so you can see the number. But you would normally write sine theta is equal to negative 3 over root 34 divided by 34. Cosine theta is negative 5 root 34 over 34. Tangent theta is 3 over 5. Cotangent, 5 over 3. Secant, negative root 34 over 5. Cosecant theta, negative 34 over 3. And again, I got all of that information by simply plotting my point, going from the origin, which was my y-axis, to my very first point, using the slope of the line. Took that first point, used that as my x and y. I also used that x and y to throw into the Pythagorean theorem, which is also the formula for the radius of a circle which is r equals x squared plus y squared, when the circle is centered at 0. So I found my r was root 34. I can't reduce this in any way. That's the, the other important thing here is that if I could take out multiples of square numbers of 34, I would. But this is 17 times 2. 17 is a prime number. 2 is a prime number. So I can't reduce this radical any further. Uh, and from there, I wrote up my trig ratios using the y over r, x over r, y over x x over or r over x, r over y, and x over y. So I hope that helps with any sort of homework problem you're doing.